Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm going to chat a little bit about the difference between being strategic and tactical uh, in your decision making about your situation. I, I, I often talk about that in the context of looking at your situation as a war, not just the battle. And, and you can make decisions that in the moment tactically make sense and might accomplish your short-term goal, goal, whereas a more strategic decision is setting you up for a longer-term uh, longer term victory. And one of the key points to remember about this is, one, your ex wants you to be in the moment, wants you to be basically approaching things in a tactical mode where you're only thinking about the, the what's absolutely going on right now. If they can ge keep you in that mindset to where you're not looking at the big picture and you're not making strategic long-term decisions and taking actions in that way that can really help your, your situation and when you're in family court, your case. This also does work when... Uh, it's you're not directly in litigation and and they're just trying to control the narrative they're trying to potentially alienate your kids they're trying to turn everyone they possibly can against you you acting in a way to where you're not really thinking about the long term effects or the the way that your decisions look can really uh it can really have a profound effect on your situation and it can also have a profound effect on your own mental stability and mental health, because if if your adversary can get you into a situation to where you are constantly just uh, fighting in the moment and you know trying to put out fires and 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 dealing in that way, and they keep you moving right. I mean, there's like there's constantly these these things being lobbed at you, so you're constantly like, oh my god, oh my god, you got to move around, you know, take dodge left, dodge right to try to to mitigate it or just to survive, it, it puts them in a, in, a, in a huge advantage because they are using your actions to actively undermine your own credibility. If you've watched some of my older videos, I, I've, I often talk about how when you're involved in a smear campaign to actively fight it is a mistake. And, and this is kind of an, or it's a good example of thinking tactically versus thinking strategically, you know, focusing on the, the little battle or the current crisis of the moment, as opposed to the long-term, long-term stuff you're dealing with. Now I, I talk about this from, from the position of making those mistakes. I, I very much was so fixated on the short term, on what was happening in the moment, that uh, uh, I continually took the bait. I continually made those mistakes that just complicated everything. And bottom line is, is it, is it really means taking a step back and thinking about the actions and the responses that you're going to take and really determining if that's going to get you or push you into the direction that you're wanting to go or are achieving your ultimate goals. Okay. So I'm talking, I'm talking in circles and, and what I mean is it, for instance, let's say you're in the situation and you want stability in your life. You want, uh, you want to try to minimize the smear campaign. And if you have children, let's say you want to minimize the parental alienation. Well, then that means you really have to think about what you're, what you're going to do. And it's really tough because more than likely your, your ex is going to be a master manipulator and just perfect at spinning, spinning a yarn, so to speak, that the tour you keep falling in the trap. And, and this is a very narcissistic toxic approach, no matter what it is. I, I was actually talking to someone earlier today, actually, about a work situation where the same type of thing is happening, where 
the other person is is in a professional environment is making accusations and you know setting traps and and having you know their target fall into it to undermine it to undermine themselves to, to and to also take the uh, approach or not the approach but the attention off of them it's like well i'm not doing this they're doing this this you know and then de- playing the word salad to 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 control the conversation and and it's really it it, it it's incredibly tough to navigate this. And I've seen, I personally have seen this and dealt with this professionally, personally. And one thing I've always noticed that, that that's really amazing about this is you're kind of always in this lose, lose. They set up these double binds to where you, you can't win. And I think the key difference that you have to remember when you're dealing with someone like this is they're not married to anything that they're doing. You know, I mean, if they, if they have a position, it's to, an achieve, it's to achieve a goal or an outcome. So if they're trying to deflect what they're doing and project it onto someone else, then it, it's like in a moment when their argument's not working, they can switch to something else. Because it's not necessarily that they're, they're really bringing up key issues. It's that they're they're trying to, to trying to set you up to make a mistake to fall into it and uh, and kind of get them let them go the key point in that is to is to understand that and to be focused on on what you're really trying to accomplish it goes back to being strategic now the hard part most of the time for the non-narcissistic person or the empathic person is that you feel bound to a certain moral and ethical code and what you're trying to accomplish or what you're trying to do, you know, you've, you're attached to, right? I mean, you're attached to your integrity. You're attached to your, your image uh, or your reputation, I think is a better way to, to say that. So it makes it tougher, right? So when someone's attacking you, you want to counterattack or you want to defend yourself. It's like, hey, you know, this person's saying I'm a, I'm a scumbag or, or that, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, and you want to defend yourself. It, bottom line is, is I think it's really critically important to write down, document for yourself what you're trying to accomplish. If we roll the clock back, to the beginning part of this video, I was saying, you know, if you're trying to make your life calm, you're trying to, you know, minimize the damage to your reputation. And like, if you have kids, if, if it's not a professional situation, it's like, how do you deal with that? Well, the first thing really is to slow yourself down and, and really think about what you're, what you're trying to do. Right. And I, and I know that sounds incredibly simple and it sounds, uh, you know, obvious, well, at least I hope it sounds obvious, but the thing is, is when you can think and take a breath, you know, you know, stop and go, okay, what's going on? What's their goal? What are they trying to accomplish in this particular situation? Then you can kind of, then you can, you can undermine it or you can, under, you can, attack their position, I guess, for, for uh, lack of a better word, from a different angle. For instance, if let's say you're being smeared and instead of going towards the person who, you know, is being, is the target of the triangulation. And, and most of the time what happens is, is they recruit somebody and then that person feels obligated to come to you and, and talk to you about how bad you are or, or, you know, you know, whatever. And yeah, if you understand what they're trying to do, what what you're the person who's targeting you is trying to do, you'll be able to anticipate the comments that the person is going to make, the underlying tone and uh, message that they're trying to communicate, and then you can be very strategic and pointed about how you respond. Right? I mean, if they say something like. Uh, Let's see if, if they're like, you know, well, well, you know, you, you're, you're caught up in this thing and you won't, you know, you only think of yourself and it's like, oh, okay, well, wow. I mean, why do you think that? I mean, you know, that's not what I want to want to do. So, you know what, I mean, what specifics are you talking about? 
you know, oh, well, you, you know, you won't, uh, you won't do X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay. Well, you know, and, and, and then you approach it in a calm and methodical manner. I mean, and I'm, it, it's a tough situation because everything is so freaking nuanced and the message that's being said about you or the story that's being said about you is, is incredibly targeted. And so I had a little power outage there. So, but anyways, I, what I was saying is the message is, is incredibly targeted towards you and, and you have to be incredibly careful how you approach it. And you also need to, to, when you're making your decisions and you're trying to figure things out, looking at it and also keeping in the back of your mind, like how are other people going to view what I'm doing specifically? How is the court going to view what you're doing? What would a judge think? Keep in mind that your adversary is going to target your actions to prove their point. Think about that for a moment. I mean, really, really think about how they can use your actions against you. Now, you can often say that a, <coughs> excuse me, you can often say that, uh, you know, a narcissist is going to fall into their routine patterns, which is true, but they'll also use that in the context to say, to try to, you know, to try to target you or saying that you are that toxic person. And the thing is, is keep in mind that when your buttons are pushed, when you're stressed, when you're operating from a tactical level in that immediate, like, okay, you know, there's a, there's a situation going on right now that I have to deal with right now. You can, you can approach that and answer basically that call or that, uh, that provoca uh, provocation and undermine your whole story or undermine your own credibility. And that, and that's the thing. And, and the other part of that to remember, and I'll put a link, there was a, a an interview I did a couple of years ago with, uh, the owner of Cordell and Cordell. And he was talking about it towards the end, mid, mid to the end of the interview about how to approach dealing with a toxic person in a high conflict situation whenever you can't get a diagnosis of the other person. And he was, and he specifically spoke about how you present yourself really, really matters in, in these situations. And, and, it, and the, and the sad part is, is, is it seems a little underhanded. It seems a little manipulative because you're not being true to, to yourself. You know, you're, you're, you're measuring yourself, but here's the thing in these situations, it's super freaking critical how, it, how it's all perceived. I'm sure in your situation, and I would love to hear, you know, if you can agree with this in the comments below that, you probably have seen how some people just aren't hearing what you're saying. You're trying to explain to them what you've been through, what you're going through, how bad the X is, and what you're realizing or what you're noticing. And this is what I noticed is that people are, but they weren't necessarily believing you. You know, you were, I was in my situation, undermining my own credibility. And, you know, the people were looking at it as like, okay, either we both were stupid or, you know, we both are equally playing a part in this and it makes it really tough. So it's really important to be measured on how you deal with things. Again, it's important to be strategic in your responses and your actions and the decisions that you make. I mean, this even goes, and I'll wrap this up here quickly, but it even goes with your interaction with your kids, right? I mean, because if you're and I, if you're responding or reacting in a way, or you're not acting in a way that that in, are you're you're making decisions that in in your children's mind is validating that you're the difficult one. And I deal with this all the time. I was talking about it before. These people are masters at the double bind. To where, you, you know, you, you, how do you make a decision that's appropriate? I, for, I, I, I'll just say a good example is my daughter needed to bring her, her, her little critters back over for a couple of days because her mom's going out of town. And uh, I, we got stuck in town taking her to an uh, urgent care appointment. 
And their mom was like, hey, you know, no problem. I'll just bring them in your house. I'm like, you are not coming in my house. <laughs> you know, I mean, I had to put a boundary down on that. Uh, and I'm like, well, no, we'll just come by and get it later. It's not a big deal. But but it's a situation where, you know, it was a lose-lose, right? I, you know, I mean, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys have a different opinion, but what I will tell you is right behind the camera is the front door. Anybody who walks in the front door, they see, you know, DSD studios and, uh, I just don't, I don't need that. Right. I mean, she probably knows, but I don't need, you know, I don't want, uh, you know, that person or a person like that to, to have access, uh, especially with me not here doing that. So what I'm just saying is, is that's the type of thing that happens, right? So it makes you look, you, you get, you get, put, I, and I'm not saying that that was a bad decision. I think you get, it's a mitigated risk. And sometimes we're going to get caught in those double binds to where the, every decision you make is, is, is wrought with, 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 with problems. And, that, and, and again, they are, fantastic at creating scenarios where that is exactly what happens. And you just have to take a breath, really think strategically about, you know, what is the best course of action? And, you know, I mean, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong, but, but, uh, I think if you do that and you slow yourself down and, and you really are focused on, and I'll end this with this, focused on those things you wrote down before those those goals those things that are really what you're trying to accomplish not getting back at them on this one off thing which make will make you feel good in the moment but does it really get you and push you to your strategic goal i mean that's like even in, in my situation i'm trying to keep some stability so part of that decision was i don't need extra questions asked i don't need you know it's like wow what's going on here what you know and then driving a, a farther discussion that could potentially create more problems. So, um, I, I think, uh, I, and this was kind of a very broad way to talk about, uh, some emails that I've, I've gotten and uh, I'll have to go into more detail later on some, some other things that might, might make sense. But I, I just would like to know if you've made it towards the end of this video, if this makes sense to you and if you can relate to what I'm trying to say and the message I'm trying to convey, uh, primarily my hope out of this is to get you to see how looking long-term is a better course of action to get you where you want to go. Because if somebody could have instilled that message into my, <laughs> into my little pea brain, uh, years ago, it would have made my situation better, faster, and got me, you know, basically helped me achieve my goals better and make my situation or my environment a hell of a lot more stable uh, than it took. Than it took. It took a lot longer. It took a long time for me to beat my head against the wall to ultimately uh, learn these lessons, so to speak. So, on that, I will. Uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye.